The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this bright, yeah, cold but bright and breezy uh, Monday here in the Boston area. We're looking at the Dow um, down 18 at 34.264 after the spectacular move on Friday, going to a leg B. Uh, let me just I'll go through a couple of things in a moment. Let me just run these down. Uh, the Dow is in leg B, maybe makes a PB if it can't get about 34,310. It's trying desperately to do that. You've got uh, quite a few Dow stocks that are just showing. Oh, Boeing is the one. Boeing is up uh, eight Woo, at 205.12 over the 200 period moving average. So this is what I was talking about uh, over the last week, that we've got within sectors, you've got rotational correction, corrections. And the, the sectors that were weak have had some nice balances in certain stocks but within the sectors themselves for instance in the ppa which is the ppa is the uh, invesco aerospace and defense uh portfolio i didn't update this with the notations i looked at it and i forgot to update it this is uh there's your up arrow goes to a buy signal pulls back sharp uh, goes to an a then a b pulls back very sharply under the 200 period movie average, and then what does it do? It goes to C, and today it's in leg D. So what I want you to say is, going back to Boeing, is that within sectors that have held well, you've had some stocks that have been terrible. In some sectors that you've seen very poor action, some stocks have suddenly, over the last week or so, had a spectacular move. Are we looking at Shopify as one of those? Yeah, yeah, Shopify. Look at that, down a fraction today, but wow got beaten down, even just you take the 70s, the last big move back in July, uh, down to the 45 level, and then up to the 200 period moving edge, but this was at 176 back in November of 2021. Boeing's the same thing, so Boeing gets smashed. I mean, just the last move down from 240-ish um, to 170s, and now it's at 204 with a big, a big move up today, a 4% move. Uh, in the monthly chart, yep, it's just sideways. The weekly chart, that was a big move. So what I've been saying is, <clears throat> within this context, if you're able to identify the stocks that either have been extremely weak and are now having a, just a, a kind of, not just a relief rally, but a potential turnaround that's going to help that sector, Boeing is one of those. It was acting quite well the other day, but not good enough. But if today's move holds and by... Um, I go all the way through to Friday. Boeing is actually holding above 201. I, I would prefer to say above 204 where it is right now. And it's actually hit 210. That's that's a change in dynamic. So this is what I wanted to go through. So within the context of all the different sectors, the Dow, the Dow 30 is no more the Dow Industrials. You have to look at the XLI. Is it XLI? Yeah, the XLI is... In fact, a more formal S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund, even though they don't have uh, only industrials, they have enough that I can call it more an industrial. The Dow is just the Dow 30. I love it. It's a Dow 30, and it's uh, got a, a really nice mix with it. So in the meantime, oh, I went to Dow, the Dow Chemical. Didn't mean that. Well, even in the chemical area, you've got some that have been absolutely decimated and you've got a couple of others. Oh, I had it on the tip of my tongue. Uh, memory, I should say. I can't remember what it was. It was one chemical that I was looking at over the weekend that had a really good rally. So this is a very mixed picture. So within that context, let's just go back to this. What we're looking at is the Dow um, pulling back just a fraction. And it's just got enough uh, Dow stocks. I mean, Disney is exactly in the category I'm talking about within a sector that it held very well, the Dow. And then this particular stock gets slammed, uh, going from the, over 100, about almost 120 uh, back in May or so of this year. And then it tumbles down to 78.71 on October the 4th. And here it is at 88. This is a nice turnaround. It doesn't mean to say this is it. It just means 
This is a big move, percentage-wise, 78 to uh, 91. <laughs> I mean, percentage-wise, that's good. Okay, now let's get back to the story, because the story is we've also got to look at what are the technicals telling us in each picture. So look at this. The daily Dow has the nine period way over the 14. It's way over the inside track. Repellent zone is now the propellant zone. That takes you into the 32,900, 32,780 area. So in this particular instance, filling the first gap would take you more or less towards the 33,790. Let's call it 33,800 level. <clears throat> that would fill in the first gap. So we're always looking, um, there ex there's an expression that we've used uh, for, for decades and decades, the three-gap play. There's a whole panoply of, of scenarios under which this particular scenario is, is a viable one. And basically it says there's a huge gap to the upside, then another gap to the upside. If that ever turns around and comes back and fills at least the bottom gap, then what you've got to look at is a whole array of things like where we could just suddenly turn around and break almost one to one to the upside. There are a lot of things. I don't like to do that. I like to go one step at a time. The first step is what will happen if the Dow, for whatever reason this week, let's say bonds start to uh, um, uh, drop even further and yields go higher. What's the scenario that we're looking at? <clears throat> the scenario we're looking at is you cannot rule out that once you break the 200 period moving average, now you start looking at that gap. But the three gap play, as far as I'm concerned, none of this really fits the way I look at it. Not the sideways move where you just went nominally higher from the from the high that was made right here at the uh, inside track repellent zone. The outer repellent zone is 33,000. Uh, sorry, 34,161. Well. Um, this is very good action with 600 points above that. But look, it's taken one, two, three, four, five, six sessions. You've basically gone sideways. You've got a you've got a very serious now, very short term wedge formation with resistance. It's very clear where that resistance is on the way up and on the way down. Um, I think you kind of trapped just for the moment. You trapped right here. That doesn't mean to say you have to break down, but it says the upside's kind of limited just at this particular moment. And if we start to break to lower lows, then you look at this whole candle, that whole candle represents support. And then you're talking about under 33,000, say 490. That's serious stuff. Okay, I like to go one step at a time. At this point, I have no reason even to think of this gap down, right, the, the gap up, I'm sorry, right here below 33,500. Oh, below 33,480 actually, um, I'm looking at this consolidation here. How does it represent? What happens? Let's go to the weekly chart. The 9 period moving average is still very weak. The magnitude is still very weak. The stochastic is still very weak. The unbalanced volume is good. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to see the weekly chart start to become almost like a bicycle that goes to a buy mode. At this particular point, it's still digesting huge gains. Monthly chart is improving a lot because that green nine period moving average is still holding very nicely. That's just one. I don't want to spend the same time on the others, but it is important to look at one other, and that's the QQQ. Why? Because the QQQ has a different pattern, and the daily, weekly, and monthly are actually very positive. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 32, S&P down 18, 15. That's what chapter Tiger King comes out. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. A couple of things I wanted to go through is this daily chart of the QQQ, the NDX 100. Basically, it's the Investor QQ Trust Series. Very strong move above the, um, above the inside track repellent. It's now the propellant zone. The price is way above the green nine period moving average. The green nine period moving average is way above the 14 period moving average, making 369.90 and 367.06 the containment area for that. Those techniques it happens to correspond exactly to the green and red, uh, sorry, green and pink inside track repellent zone, and now it's a propellant zone. The MACD is fabulous. Look at that his expanding histogram. The nine period moving average, sorry, the stochastics at 93% and flat, fabulous action. On balance volumes a tad overbought. So, <laughs> within that context, look at this cup formation. And I drew this in some time ago. I don't think it's going to be accurate, but um, I just, I did it. I didn't know any other way that I could do it. I chose a particular candle. Uh, in fact, I'm, I think I missed the, I, I typed it in, I did one bar too early it should have been right there so this should go oh it doesn't really matter it goes to there okay and you've got the inside track uh repel this is the inside wedge target resistance line and you've got a little cup maybe a little cup and hand lot really you need to get all the way to 408 to do that now this is really important to me because the MACD in the a weekly chart of the QQQs is still, it's got a long way to go to go positive. The histogram is still negative. The uh, nine has flipped to last week and flipped to positive, and that's um, nine over the 14. And the stochastic is just okay at 52%. The on balance volume is good, not, uh, not overboard, just very good. So this says to me, this chart that you've drawn with this cup formation, which is the inversion of the dreaded H pattern. Why? Because if it takes out the high that was made the week of the 21st of 
uh, July of uh, th uh, 187.98 uh, and closes above it, certainly if it does that for two out of three weeks, consecutive weeks, then all of a sudden you're looking at the next level of resistance, which will be somewhere around the 400 uh, area, and then you can go all the way to 4871. So it's a work in progress, number one. Number two is the technicals in the weekly chart haven't confirmed, and now we're going to do the same thing with the daily, with the monthly chart. The monthly chart, here's this pattern that I call the falling axe in the weekly chart. It broke above it, which says you can go one to one to the upside under certain conditions, but you're going to have to have that MACD eventually cross positive. And the month, the monthly chart has the same pattern, slightly different uh, configuration because the monthly chart. And it's got the falling axe, that means it's made lower highs and much lower lows, and now it's trying to form a cup formation, cup formation, to be able to tackle the resistance line and break above it. So all of these are saying that the QQQ, which has the meta, meta, doing quite nicely, it has its own little cup formation, which is the double cup formation. And in fact, it's in a leg C in a buy mode in the daily. Uh, it's probably it's gone to a leg C in the uh, weekly chart, and you've got a leg B in the monthly. This is still very positive. What have we got here? We've got Meta, we've got Apple. Apple is uh, not as good. It's in a strong leg C in a buy mode. Let me put the up arrow in. You always know, up arrow means it's a buy signal confirmed uh, as a buy mode under certain conditions. And the weekly has rising highs and rising lows. And now we can forget about this particular line right here. It's already done its job. And we can talk about this rising trend line in Apple. And this is still Apple. It's really not anywhere close to as innovative as it had been uh, even 10 years ago. Uh, it's more a little stodgy company that's making adjustments, but has got the product and has got the residual monthly fees that everybody's paying. And that just says, the 200 area would be a target. 188.23 was the uh, the last major high, and we'll see if it's able to make the cup formation to get there. It's doing it a little differently to some of the others, but certainly it's making at this particular point in the daily chart higher highs and higher lows, helping the weekly. Weekly is helping the monthly. So I, I don't want to go through them all. I do have to speak about um, Apple, uh, sorry, Microsoft. I had a question about Microsoft. Where do I think the support will be? Um, let's just do this. So yes, your cup formation, beautiful Chapman wave, left side, right side, price, time match. There's the plumb line that I chose from the 366.78 high uh, of, I think it was June, June, July. And then it pulls back all the way to the uh, 309 level to the nine period exponential, sorry, the 200 period moving average of the daily chart. And then it went to the exact day, an exact week, uh, to this left side, right side price time match that I had made in the um, uh, daily chart. There's this midpoint that I chose, and there you go, and it hit it to the day. And it went to 366.78, and then it went above it to 370.10. Uh, oh, should, I should mention, uh, yeah, we are, we are long. And um, taking a little bit of profit off, uh, but... This is the area that I said I'm looking at as the inside track repellents is the same as Apple, that rising trend line. And it got there. It's got maybe another point or so to go, 371-ish. But this is really important. Why? Because look at the time period that it took for this big arch and this little tiny little handle, rising handle, to take place. So I, I like the fact that Microsoft's pulling back, gap down today, down three at 366.67. That tells me that as a benchmark for the Dow, although this is in a leg E, there's no other, I, I can give it an alternate count, there's no need to, it's a leg E or maybe E slash B. Um, in the daily chart, E slash A, I, should, I said I'd talk about it today. I, if I get to it, I get to it, or maybe I'll do it tomorrow. But what happens when the gray A or gray B goes to a new recovery high? You, if, if you haven't taken out the low, the starting point of the last buy signal to buy mode, then you continue the, the letter, but you have it as an alternate count. And that is a very important aspect. I'll get to it maybe uh, either today or a little later on. So within that context, what I am expecting, and Microsoft is telling me, be prepared for some kind of a pullback here. I've never figured out why when the mouse moves a little bit, 
I lose all my charts and it goes to the background screen. All right, doesn't matter. So that's important. Now, I needed to show you something else. Gold is pulling back from its high today uh, of uh, 1946. It's at 1939. Not a big deal, but it's really struggling. You remember that my, my contention was, and I discussed this in my uh, overview video for my subscribers, my all long video that I always do on the weekends, um, discussing what we have, what we're looking at, what's happened, why, uh, the aspects that are important to me. Um, gold is pulling away from the 200 period moving average. If you look at the weekly chart, that are, it's really not a very, very positive. Uh, it's not very negative, but it's not really positive. It's just sideways consolidation. But my contention was, and I spoke about this on Friday, that gold is um, an instrument that is kind of the go-to instrument when geopolitical tensions are rife. When they're really high, that's where gold, or XLF, and I need to show you the XLF, when the XLF, the financial, American S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, when that's tanking, you'll see money go to gold. Safe havens, right? This is a little different. I think that it's because there's ground um, activity in the Middle East, in, in, in Gaza, it's different to the type of warfare that one would see that would make gold really soar to the outside. That's my contention. I'll be back. Dow's down. down to Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
All right, so we're back and uh, covered a couple of things. But look, when you're looking at high-grade copper, if this is really the big move that takes us to uh, new all-time highs, at some point I would like to see high-grade copper, which is I keep what, what am I doing wrong here? At HG. Yeah, high-grade copper is kind of at the lows. It's the monthly chart it says, hey, it's not so bad. Weekly chart says, whoops, dreaded H, and you've already taken out the left side low a couple of times. Uh, trying to rally here means that the technicals uh, need to very quickly, in the daily uh, and the weekly chart, need to move very strongly higher so that high-grade copper at 3.64 actually starts to go to the 3.75 and then the 200 period moving average of 381. If and when it does that, that'll that'll be at least for me a sign that you're getting. You might just have the magnificent seven moving up with isolated stocks. As I said, the Boeing was looking terrible. All of a sudden, some good news, and now it's moving higher. You want to see the XLF, the financials moving high. You want to see high grade copper moving high. You want to see wood, the iShares of the global timber and forestry ETF, as, which has been a kind of a sideways move. At 74, really start to move into the 77, 78 area. To me, that would be a good sign. I'm not saying it can't do it. I'm saying that's what I'm looking for, for a confirmation of the bigger move. I think I just hit a ping. And we're going to Garo in Newport Beach. Garo, how are you? I'm very good. How about you, sir? I am well, thank you. You'd like to okay. look at? Yes, sir. Uh, regarding, I'm um, calling regarding SQ, if you have the time, have a look at it, please. Uh, I, yes. uh, I traded at a square uh, on the first, starting November the 1st uh, right. at um, on, on 120 minutes uh, when uh, the candle hit the upper dot and the dot moved down uh, around $41. I uh, traded that from $41 all the way up to $52. And now um, I see that uh, the 120 minutes, uh, we have about five, five dots from the top. And uh, MACD and stochastic, especially <clears throat> MACD, it's uh, rolling down. You think, uh, the, you think the party is over or the, 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 the rally is keep continuing? Well, first of all, let me just, I haven't got it on my 120 minutes. I did have it on one of them, but I, I took it off now. I can't remember. Um, S A R. Uh, what? Let me just check in the daily chart what it what is called here, and I'll get to it. Uh, it's yes, got sir. a different. It's got a different name in Trade Station. It is called the uh, format. Yeah, why is it missing it right now? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, the parabolic S A R. Yeah, that's what it's called. Let me just get that right here. I'll put it onto my 120 minute chart. Insert indicator P parabolic. There it is. Parabolic SAR. Click and we're in business. There we go. Okay. So, and, and for the last uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, 120 minute bars, it's been pink. But, Garo, what I would do. So, wait, you, what is your position right now, or you have no position? No position at this time. I want to go short, but it's not. It's not. Um, it's not uh, to my. Uh, it is not the way that uh, the position is not there. That the, the 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 chart is not there. That I short it. I I will short it when the candle hits the bottom line, uh, which uh, is going to be somewhere somewhere around fifty dollars and forty six cents. From there on, the short will start for me, but uh, I'm not sure about it. Okay, so now I don't know if you can see my chart. I've got a peak E in the Chapman Way from the starting point back around about the, uh, the uh, October the 27th or so. And now what's happened, if you look at this chart, I would not consider this a short at this particular time at all. And I yes. agree with you, it would have to drop. But for me, it would have to probably drop under 50 to get that green nine period moving average pink. And right now it's very strong and it's green. And you can see even with the little dots of the uh, uh, parabolic SAR, you, you haven't gone anywhere. You're just in this rectangle formation. 
So, yes, it could go a little bit lower, but the daily chart and this 120-minute chart is suggesting strongly that it's going to go to a leg C in the daily chart, and that would be above the high of 51, uh, sorry, 5335. So yeah, 5335 yeah. is uh, almost two points above where it is now, but it can hold here. If this is just what I would call a digestive phase, so that the direction that I would be working with in, in square, which is block, uh, now called block, it used to be called square, I would, right. I can see a little dip, but my guess is that the dip is really more um, a momentary slide before it actually starts to run up again. So I, my eye just says I don't see it as a short. Now, I know you used your, your technique very well. I don't want to influence you to say, hey, don't short it. But the low today is 50.86. It's already almost a point above that. It, it really doesn't want to go down from the, from the look of that nine-period moving average. And I know the MACD is weak and the stochastics weak, but I put a lot of faith in that nine-period moving average, and it's strong. So I don't really see it, but I would, I'll tell you this. Mm. If it's able by the end of the day, the day is young. Now the Dow's only down 18. S&P has come back to minus 11. And I'm just going to look at this, and I would say to you, I'm going to go to uh, just real quickly, because I know you also like to look at uh, shorter-term charts. I'm going to go to the 10-minute chart. Square, there it is. Square, uh, moving, making higher highs and higher lows in the one-minute chart. Peak A... Peak B, leg C in the 5-minute chart, just the leg A in the 10-minute chart, but it's taken out all the rest of the, of the highs from earlier on. It's made a new high. No, I like this. I, I'm, I'm not in the short camp, unless it's a real quick uh, 70 cents or something like that. I, I might be wrong. And as I say, the day is young. There's a lot of stuff going on yes. because you've got new leadership yes. on the day. Uh, even Microsoft, which needed a rest, only pull back three and something, now it's down only two. I kind of like what I'm seeing. So I'm just going to say to you, if you're asking my opinion, I I wouldn't be shorting Square right now. In fact, I'd probably be looking more towards buying. Mr. Basil, by looking at the daily chart, well, the way that you're explaining to me that this is not a short and there's a way to go higher. On a daily chart, you think this will get to a 200 EMA to $60 in, in time? Not, not today or tomorrow, but in time, you think that will get to 60 bucks or not? Um, the first, well, it is close to 60. The 50, yeah, 59.22 was the high on the uh, 6th of uh, September before it really September, started yeah. to tank. So I go, I yeah. go one step at a time because for me, the next level is the doji candle of the 13th that has a high of 54.58. So all of those levels are are suggesting that that i go one one step at a time in fact why don't you hold on a second i'm going to do a little work and then i'll give you the parameters that i'm looking at can you hold on yes sir yes sir okay Absolutely. Well, i'll be back with garo we're looking at the dow down 17 this would be down 12 we're looking at square which is blocked i'll be right gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. We're back with Daryl uh, from uh, California. We're looking at uh, Square, which is block informally Square point of sale software my, um, manages receipts. Um, it's also now based in. It's also kind of coin based. Uh, we're looking at, as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing this. It's a little bit um, conservative, not quite as aggressive as I would normally be in a pattern like this, and I'm suggesting that. <clears throat> It's holding extremely well. The, the stochastic's flat at 88%. That's exactly what you want to see when it's in a buy mode. And it is in a buy mode. So it has an up arrow. And the reason being, the it's way above the 9 period moving average. The 9's over the 14. The MACD's strong. Stochastic's flat. One balance isn't yet overbought. I like it. So I'm looking at this, and I would say to you that based on the work that I've done, um, the high that was made back on the 15th of September of 5408. Um, I've got that as a target by about the 20, 21st, 22nd of November. So I might be wrong, but that's kind of the way I'm looking at it, especially since even the 120-minute uh, uh, pullback has got a strong nine period moving average over the 14th. So not to say that it couldn't short, if you just real short, to, uh, you know, waiting for a quick pullback, but I would say any pullback probably looks to me like it's a good opportunity to, to enter for a long position. I hope that helps you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I wrote it down, and uh, I'll, I'll see how it goes, and then probably I'll call you sometimes uh, by end of the week or next week. Thank okay. you, sir, for your time and listening to me. Have My nice pleasure. Day. Thank you. Hope Bye -bye. it works out. Thank you very much for calling. So, folks, you see Thanks. how the Dow's coming back? This is really important. So we I, we had a very important position we wanted to take this morning. Um, we wanted to buy a quite kind of aggressively, but a small position in a, in a particular ETF. And I, I always I, I say chuckle, but actually it's upsetting because it went. <clears throat> I said to buy it under a certain price. It went right to that price. Didn't go one penny below. But it actually is still not acting all that well. So it's still in play. And a bunch of things happen if we do trigger that entry point. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm looking at this and I'm saying, are you just teasing me, market? Uh, what are you doing? Oh, is it going to take off now without us in this position? Um, <laughs> that's just the way it is. But I, I put that's the number I wanted. I made a change from a, a lower level 
I said, nope, it's, it's, it's holding very well. Don't get too carried away on any slide because it, buyers are there. Buyers keep wanting to come in. So now let's do this. I wanted to show you, um, where was it? Where was it? Uh, yeah, so look at this. So I showed subscribers over the weekend. I said, look, Simtas is at all-time highs. This is overalls uniform rentals. URI, which is the also rental, but it's different. This is United Rentals. This is kind of big equipment. Is holding very nicely. It's got the Chapman Wave falling axe formation. The week has just started and it's trying to get out of this resistance level. But remember, if you know anything about trend lines, if you know anything about channels, there's a whole panoply of things you have to look at. It isn't the first move away that says, oh, oh this is it. No, there's a whole process that has to be done. So this line, look, a trend line could get a downtrend line or an uptrend line could get taken out just on time alone. The price hasn't gone anywhere. But if you're moving to the right, that trend line is going to be hit. That's number one. Number two is within this kind of context, yes, you've gone nine period moving average has gone positive in the weekly chart. MACD hasn't turned positive yet. The stochastic's only at 45%. But the daily chart, we've seen so many charts like this. Now, I wanted to show you something that I think is an educational thing in the Chapman Wave. There's so many of you using Chapman Wave. Now, I need to do this more often. <clears throat> See this inverted Chapman Roman candle right here at the low of uh, October the 26th at uh, 387.01. I'm going to type that in, 387.01. 87.01 on October the 20, what did I say, 23rd or 26 or something? I think I said 26. This is type 26. I'll change that if I'm wrong. Um, so that cannot be A. You cannot have the high and the low at the same time except in the inst Chapman Wave instant restart at peak D. That is not an A. No, no, no. Why? Because you haven't made a trough. You haven't started the upward count. You can only do that on the next bar if there's a higher low. So this is not a never start your A on the low that makes a higher high. It's after that that you can start. So this is not A. No, 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 no. Where is A? Well, you can start it on the 27th. That's your start starting point. Um, color just red, just so that you know that I'm talking about. No. Now you get a gray A right here because you've made your trough, so the very first high becomes that A, gray A. I'll change it to gray in a minute. But that becomes a gray B. But now the stochastic's over 80%. The MACD is good. The uh, 9 is way over the 14. So that B isn't a gray B anymore because it becomes everything's a blue. Now this is blue, meaning you've got a buy signal to buy mode, and that URI daily should go to a leg D. That's number one. Weekly chart is improving. But look where it is. United Rentals Inc. makes an all-time high, just under 500 uh, four months ago. Pulls back down to the uh, 315, so it's a 20, about a 20, not, not quite a 20% decline. But look where it is now. That's fantastic action. <clears throat> So the economy is so, I, I don't know what the Fed could be thinking, because if you look at something, it could be horrible. If you look at something else, it says, what are you talking about? This is fantastic. Okay, so that's Sintas. The other one I want to look at is waste management. Why? Because waste management, you know, when the economy is really bad, eventually waste management pulls back. Most of the time, waste management is trying to um, move to the upside. And here it is, 173.71. Uh, was the high in June, 175.58 was the high in August of 2022, and here we are, where? 172.20. This is another thing that's saying to you, well, the economy, it's not that bad. So all I can say is this is a very mixed market depending on, depending on which sectors you're looking at, and within that context, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to do this because I want you to talk about the semiconductor uh, index as also another benchmark. Look at this. That weekly chart making that almost a, a beautiful cup and handle, not quite a cup and ladle, but a cup and handle, which says, yeah, I don't get too carried away with these things until it breaks out. If it breaks out, invariably the handle gets filled at some point. So within that context, look at this. 
155 cents, I should say, we are still short. We have taken money off it, but we are, we're really close by pennies getting stopped out of at least the second to final position um, on Friday, but we haven't yet. But this is telling me that the, the semiconductors, and I consider the semiconductors really important. I expect that they are telling us about the general market because the semiconductors are the, uh, that's the crude oil of the 21st century. Uh, it might not be in the 22nd century, but at least for now, it's still very important. But chips have taken over from crude oil, and they in everything, everything that counts. And right now, this is a really important thing. 161 was the all-time high, and here we are at 155. That's pretty darn good action. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's only down one. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So a question came up about Volunteer Technologies and uh, PLTR down three cents in 1964. So this is, let me just do this over again. So this, in fact, is now in a buy mode with a flat stochastic. That's always really good to see. It's going to peak A, peak B. It's in leg C. It should go to a D. Oh, no, don't do this too quickly. I think I missed that. I think it's by one penny. 08, 08, yeah. So this is a leg A going to peak A. Now this is a leg B. 
Now, the question is, is this because it didn't take out the law of, uh, where was the law? The law of 1368 on this pullback. Does it mean, say, it's a continuation pattern? I'm going to say, um, I'm going to leave that out for now because it has all the ingredients of a new buy mode. I might have to change that to an F slash B, but I'm calling this a B right now, a buy mode, and it's in a leg a D in the... Um, this is what I drew the other day for left side, right side price time match, which should have gone to last week. Oh, no, it's not. It's, oh, I, gosh, I should have done that to that low right there. Yeah. Okay. So it's got this week. It was either last week or this week that it should go to 20.24. Okay. So it's looking very good. It's doing the right thing. And look at that gap. It hasn't even looked back to it'll fill that uh, part of the gap at some point, but not yet. So, yes, it's looking very good. I hope that helps you. Now, just uh, before we wrap up, Larry Pesavento, Wednesday, um, trade what you see all morning, live webinar. It should be fabulous. Wow, what a market to be doing this in. So go to the front page, check it out. You know, with Larry, I uh, always there to try to make you money throughout the webinar. It should be a great one. I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rhodes, another wonderful technician. And here we are wrapping up. And I'm going to say to you, uh, watch this market closely. The biases keep coming in. So those gaps to the downside go one gap at a time if you're thinking of the downside. Have a great day. Check out my open call, my daily newsletter. I'll see you tomorrow.